What's up guys? Welcome to another tutorial Linux video. At the risk of sounding like my old high school textbooks, uh, welcome to Unit 7. How the Linux file system is organized. Uh, I didn't know what to name these things, so I'm starting to name them units because they do go together. So for example, the last unit was uh, a number 6 about the Linux processes, process management, and the proc file system. Uh, giving you sort of an overview about processes. Um, if you haven't seen that, you probably should, but it's it's not like anything in that um, unit truly is groundwork for what we're going to talk about here. So you can kind of come in here um, if this interests you without having seen the last unit, but I do recommend that you have the basics of working on a Linux system down. So changing directories, moving around the file system, uh, you know, working with files, working with text, Good, so we're going to talk about how the Linux file system is organized. I'm going to open up a new terminal here. If we list root, and we've done this a whole bunch, uh, you see all this stuff in here. With the exception of the lost and found directory, which is purely for the mounted file system, the physical file system itself, uh, all of these things are part of the Linux file system. Now we're going to dive into some of these things. In previous videos, we've talked basically just about home and a user's home directory, you know, root and root's home, and the proc directory, or it's sort of a virtual file system, really. But now we're going to talk about the rest. So there's a couple things to say about the Linux file system. It's organic, much like Linux itself. It's grown organically since it was created, and the Unix file system itself has kind of grown organically, which means there are correct places to do things, in the sense of correct that other administrators will yell at you if you don't conform to some of these places to put, you know, configuration files or where to mount file systems, but there really isn't, it's not enforced. So you kind of have enough rope to hang yourself like with the rest of Linux. The rule of thumb seems to be, and the way I'm going to teach this is as if these things are correct, like the places to put these places, things are correct, but you can cheat and you can break a lot of these rules. It's just that we're going to work with the rule of thumb that um, the other admins we're going to work with are violent psychopaths who will hunt you down if you don't put these things where they quote-unquote belong. The directories that you're going to be working with the most, I dare say, as an admin, whether you're just sort of like a home admin who's setting up services and hacking stuff together at home, or whether you're a professional admin who works with, you know, real systems and has, you know, hundreds of servers to admin. Generally, the really important directories are going to be the same. You have etc or etsy. And what that is, is it's basically a place for all of the configuration data for your application. So when you install an application, it will create a directory in here, and then you'll have all the configuration files and configuration data in here. Also, most of the system configuration for the sort of user-facing system tools is here. So, for example, you can see cron here on the left, the uh, sort of task scheduling for Linux. But, I mean, even things like, uh, do we have SSH installed? Let's see. You can see here, there's the SSH config file, basically where you'd expect it. So, when you first, you know, when you need to check how something's configured, this is the first place you look. So it's often a very early part of your troubleshooting process. When something isn't working, the very first thing you do is, all right, is this thing running? Okay, yes. Well, it's behaving weirdly, so let's see how it's configured. And this is generally where you're going to go for that. To have configuration data for an application that isn't here requires a very good reason from another admin. For exactly this reason, is because it's instinctive to look here as sort of step one to see how something's configured. And if someone doesn't put configuration information here, it can be really effing annoying when you have to go hunting for it through the system. So, etc. Um, you'll probably hear me say Etsy. Uh, I don't know, it just rolls off the tongue a little faster. At first I thought it was crazy, especially uh, I, I worked in Europe and uh, some of the people here were like, Etsy, what is that? But uh, I have now, I can confirm that I've heard admins that are way better than me now also use the term the phonetic pronunciation, uh, Etsy. So you can go ahead and use that. Um, other really important ones, um, we'll just, I guess we'll just sort of um, list these. You can see um, these are 
binaries. Um, I think it's like secure or system binaries. So these are things that often you have to be root to call. And then your regular binaries, which this is just going to be a monstrous list. So uh, this is basically all the other binaries that your system ships with and any applications that you install even if they live somewhere else, we'll generally have a link in here. So you'll see maybe a lot of these are. So you can see a lot of these are links. The ones with the arrows here, or the L's in the front, their permissions, are links, which means that the program itself can be installed somewhere else and have its configuration files and ETC. But the binary itself wherever it lives, has a link to itself in bin. You'll see that a lot, and that's because uh, bin is on the, the path, the sort of search path for every user so that every user can access or run binaries in bin. Now, there's some restrictions to that, uh, but generally it's true. Good, so that's sbin and bin, which is basically all of your system's programs, let's say. You know, cat is in bin, all like... Uh, you know, change group, remove, rm, uh, make deer. These things are all in bin. There it is. Another really important one that you probably won't be working with much directly, but you should know about it. You'll see temp a lot. And so that's, it's really just for temporary files and it's uh, blown away every time you restart your machine. Processes will often stash data here. But generally, by the time a process or a program exits, it should have cleaned up in here. You will probably only find yourself clearing data from here, but you should know. Uh, the home directories we've talked about. So the home part of the tree contains all the user's home folders. And likewise, root's home is root hanging on root. So it's not in the other home directories, which is good for lots of reasons. Uh, libraries, uh, system libraries, shared libraries are in lib, and on 64-bit systems you'll also have lib 64, uh, not 62. Uh, you can see how much going on there. But more shared libraries here. And just generally what we're going to talk about, you can find in a man page. Yay! You can see if you do man here, or man higher for hierarchy, it will give you sort of blurbs about all the most important things. I think it even has, oops, there you go. So you can see it even drills down into a lot of these things like var and gives you a pretty good overview of how this stuff hangs together. Good, so we're gonna start from scratch in the next video, but um, I wanna make sure that you have a good foundation. So we're gonna get moving pretty quickly. I'll see you in the next video and Remember to subscribe, thumbs this up if you likes it, and subscribes to my, my G Plus and my Facebooks. And I'm just kidding, I don't have that crap. But do give this a thumbs up if this is uh, helpful. And if you've got questions, please feel free to ask in the comments. I really, I try to get to everyone who has a question or needs some clarification because this is cool stuff. See you in the next video.